Mmm, darkness. Look at this. Oh man, I think back to sort of like July time, how sunny it was when I get here. Not anymore. It's the end of the season and nothing says October like a real dark start to the car boot sale. October? What am I talking about? It's not October yet. September. October is when it ends. So I've got a few more weeks left, weather permitting. So yeah, gonna make the most of it. I know when the car boot sale stops, sorting opportunities really do dry up. And then I'm kind of left to my own devices in terms of like charity shops and other bits and bobs. So let's get out there. Let's see what we can find in the gloom. And uh, yeah, let's hope battling through the darkness is, uh, is worth it. Of course, you can't see things as easily. I've got a little head torch, so hopefully that'll uh, pay dividends. But you just don't know. So let's get to it. Boy, but you have to the uh, the shoes, sandals, and then Converse. Uh, those are my partners. I'm not too sure on those. Oh, yeah. um, <laughs> I mean, do three quid for those ones, say four for those. Yeah, that's yeah. fine, yeah, ideal. First purchase in the bag, two pairs of footwear. I do like to get a buy-in early just to get my sort of spirits up, get my morale boosted. So nothing special. Got a pair of Converse, UK size seven, nice navy Chuck Taylor high tops. Paid four quid. I'd expect anywhere between 17 to 20 for those. Not perfect condition, but minimal wear to the soles. Good start. I also got these Carrymore and TB's walking sandals. Now I typically wouldn't bother with Carrymore unless they were walking boots in a good size. But I have had luck with these and TB's in the past. Of course, we're coming into autumn. It's a beautiful day today, nice and warm. But to be honest, the chance of somebody buying these straight away, or at least within sort of the next couple of weeks when the weather is nice versus how they sell in the spring, I'd rather just wait for the spring. I could probably charge a better amount of money rather than scratching around trying to sell them before the winter comes, or at least the worst weather. So I'll hold on to them, pay three quid. I'd expect between sort of maybe 17 to 20, maybe a little bit less. With a great size, UK size 11, lovely condition, minimal wear to the soles. Yeah, I'll save them, I'll put them in a box, sell them in spring. Been bloody oh God. Well, I feel for you, because getting 13s is difficult, but getting 14s is, yeah. this must be a nightmare. I'll tell you what it's like. <laughs> yeah? And whenever my students see me put my fins on, they're like, why do you pop up? Yeah, I was gonna, oh yeah, I was gonna say, I get, I get, so yeah. <laughs> oh, man. How much do you, um, how much you have on them? Ten pounds. Ten pounds, okay. Yeah. Fair enough. Easy. Let's do it. I'm getting rid, rid of 20 and not feel bad. So these are the DC Shoes Men's Court Graphic. Nice big leather, chunky, sort of modern skate shoe. Yeah, like I said, UK size 14, US 15, Euro 50. Is that gonna focus? EU 50, unbelievable. And they are in absolutely fantastic condition. Minimal wear to the soles. They've still got the like material composition little sticker there. Um, given they're such an unusual size, could go one or two ways. They could be really desirable, or they could hang around for ages. But given the condition, given just what they are, I'm gonna push maybe 60 quid for those. I paid a tenner, so I paid up a little bit, but I'm more than happy to pay tenner for a shoe that's of this quality and of this size. So I'll try 60 and see where we go. I can always bring the price down, I can't bring the price up, so. And it also had a pair of much more respectably sized Pair of Etnies. These are the Kingpin 2s. Again, I've had these before, but in a much smaller size. I think they went for sort of £35. They're also in worse condition. These are in absolutely fantastic condition too. Minimal wear to the soles, minimal wear to the uppers. They're not leather, they're man-made, but I don't think that makes too much of a difference. Again, UK size 30, nice big size. They do fit me, but it's just not the sort of thing I'd wear, so I'm going to move them on. Um, Again, that you can buy these new for about 60 quid but not in a size 13 
So, given that there are so few size 13s on eBay, I'm probably going to push 50 on those. And again, see where we go. Like the DC, start high. I can always bring the price down, but I don't want to undersell them, so that's those. They've written the price in pen on all the expensive stuff, so the boxes are pretty much ruined. Who does that? Yes, non-footwear, would you believe it? So I've got two things from that stall. I bought some stuff from that stall previously, but like I said in the footage, a lot of the higher end stuff, they've written the price on the box. And I'm thinking, I can't really remove that because it's gonna damage the box if I do. You've just, just complete short sightedness. Like, why would you do that? Needless to say, they've had that stock for a long time and they haven't shifted it, go figure. But I did pick up these two. Something familiar first, this is a Mini Cooper, it's by a brand called Mini Champs. I do like selling Mini Champs, it's sort of a good quality uh, die cast model manufacturer. Uh, no date on this, but I'd say it dates to sort of the early 2000s. 143rd scale, I paid £2 for that one, I got on up for £20 plus postage. And I bought this on a bit of a whim, it's a yo-yo, it dates from 2004. I haven't really sold yo-yos before. The fact it's still in its package, good condition, like minimal dents, no, cra no cracks at all. It's a proper like trick yo-yo. So, I mean, for a pound, I'm gonna give that a go. Might not be worth a huge amount, but I just want to know. It's all proper up. Morning, how much on the um, tennis rackets? Uh, three pounds, mate. Three pounds. A black one? Same. Same. Uh, got a tennis racket. Now, I'm used to sending Wilson tennis rackets, but I've never actually found a Babolat that's in the case. Normally, I'll find a case and there's nothing in it. Or there's like a battered Slazenger or Dunlop racket in there. But amazingly, on this occasion, I undid the zip, took out the racket, and it matches the case. So this is a Babolat Contest Side Woofer. Weird name, I know, but it's an adult tennis racket. I believe it's titanium. Babolat's a really good quality uh, racket manufacturer. Like I said, I've been looking for it for ages. I normally just find the case, um, and even that's priced up. So really happy to find the, uh, the matching racket. So it's in lovely condition. The only issue is, as you can see, the handle is pretty flaky, but you can just like retape that typically doesn't make too much of a difference to the value you just gotta make sure it's disclosed in the, in the description pay three quid for that couldn't believe it he had two there he had a dunlop one as well but i mean i found tennis rackets taken quite a while to sell so i didn't really want to sort of like lumber myself with one that's not going mean, worth as much this one though hopefully about 40 quid which is fantastic from three pounds so yeah so never sold bubble up before but i have been looking out for it so hopefully it doesn't let me down, but we'll see. I say coming into autumn, not the sort of tennis season, but you can still play tennis indoors on a clay court. So hopefully it doesn't take as long to sell as the last few I've had have. Right, one bag so far. I think the only thing I didn't show you was this little matchbox um, hauler. Paid £2.50. It's not sealed, it's been open, but it's in mint condition, so that should be all right. And then, yeah, everything else. Oh, that's a, a snowsuit for my son, so that won't be going anywhere. <laughs> now, even by my shaky standards, that footage was rubbish, wasn't it? Really, really bad. I'm so sorry. I had no idea how bad a GoPro is in low light. I thought it would have some sort of nighttime properties, but turns out no. So even though I've really amped up the uh, the exposure of the video, you can still barely see anything, but that's kind of where I'm at. It's September, it's pretty dark when I get there, and to be fair, for the first time in a long time, I found most of what I've bought within the first sort of hour when it was darker. But I've still got a couple of bits to show you that I picked up that I didn't get on camera. Let's check them out. So yes, a couple of things I didn't get on camera towards the end of the car boot sale. Like I said a minute ago, a lot of the stuff that you saw there, I got in the first sort of 45 minutes to an hour when it was still dark. Then I had a massive gap 
of just walking around just aimlessly finding absolutely nothing and thinking maybe I should go home now I think my my time is up for this one but then fortunately I found a couple more bits just by doing a sort of bit of bit of digging one of which I can't believe was still on the table I just saw that and then I saw these I thought okay it's a Polaroid camera now a lot of Polaroids aren't worth a huge amount of money some vintage ones are but more modern ones typically I found just aren't that good now I had no idea about this one like I said in previous videos I don't have a huge amount of signal at this car boot sale I've just got to buy things and hope for the best but I pulled it out and it's this so it's the Polaroid snap that comes up very easily basically an instant sort of camera um, that comes off that's actually magnetic it's pretty cool there's the lens there um, and yeah, you load it up with these um, these films. Basically, prints instantly. A bit like the is it the Fuji film Instax and Instax Mini, that sort of thing. So you load the load the film into the back, snap a picture, and it prints out the side. Excellent. I've tested it. Say so it charges up via a was that a USB Mini? Sorry, USB Micro. So it doesn't take batteries. Charge it up, fully working, lovely condition. And as I found recently, well, let's say the last year or so, there's something about white cameras. Just white cameras just have a bit of a bit of a thing going for them. But it is in immaculate condition. And it comes with one, two, three, four, six packets of ten of film. Now I could sell those on their own, but I think I'm just gonna bundle it all together, sell it as one lot. Comes with a pouch as well, paid a fiver. I mean, souls are all over the place with this a little bit. But I reckon I can push 60 quid for that. Say, the condition, the fact it comes with all these, the fact it comes with a good memory card, the fact it comes with a pouch, I reckon 60 quid is doable. So, from a fiver, happy days. So, again, bought the camera. Again, lots of wandering around aimlessly. There was stuff there, but I was overpriced, or the condition wasn't right, or I just couldn't be bothered with it. <laughs> okay, so here's a bit of a tangent, right? So I've bought, the, I've been, I've sort of wandered around, I, I sort of see things. And I think I could buy that, and there's profit there. But I've bought it in the past and just done nothing with it. It's sat in death pile. It might be awkward to pack, it might be awkward to send. It might require excessive testing, it might require just cleaning or what have you. For whatever reason on this morning, I just wanted things that would sell well and not require, like, require minimum effort. So not buying like scaletrics or just stuff that requires just yeah testing or it's going to be a real pain to post. So a lot of stuff I left, I could have bought, but I've got enough of that stuff in my death pile to keep me going for a little bit rather than buying more. I just couldn't be bothered to buy it. But hey, plenty for everyone, right? So two more things. Again, like I've said in previous videos, I haven't been buying a huge amount of clothing. Uh, one because I just haven't really been finding stuff that I'd want to sell. Um, stuff that would do probably better on Vinted or whatnot or, or whatever. Where the, the profit margins are lower. But I was going through a rail, just women's clothing, nothing in particular. On the end there was a coat and I just saw that. And I thought, yes, come on. Mountain Warehouse Extreme. I said before... I love picking up Mountain Warehouse Extreme. It's like an, it's like a sleeper hit. Definitely as good as say like Berghouse and like basic North Face jackets. It's sort of Mountain Warehouse's more sort of premium lineup. I've had this jacket previously, not literally this one, but this model. This is called the Glacier Long Waterproof Jacket. It is actually pretty long. But this one is a size 3XL. Massive, massive size. I should dry 10,000. Really good waterproof, breathable properties. I paid three pounds for that. Couldn't believe it. Now, I'll be honest, it was a bit minging when I bought it. It had like, just just grub all over it. So I put it in the washing machine, gentle cycle, gentle detergent, and it's come out really well. Last one I sold, sold for 35 pounds. Give us a three XL, might push 40, but I reckon 30 to 35 is a good, is a realistic return. So for three quid, more than happy with that. But what I will say is about Mountain Warehouse Extreme, maybe stick to the jackets because I've bought sort of uh, soft shells, mid layers, stuff like that, and the demand doesn't seem to be as strong. So if you do find it, fantastic. But if you want the best profit, stick to the jackets. And finally, now I was walking back to the car, I was pretty much done, just doing a final sort of like sweep of things. 
And I saw this hanging in a tree. A seller sort of commandeered a tree and was hanging bits from it. And uh, I just saw that. I thought, oh, the Baby Bjorn carrier. Good brand, good uh, baby brand of carriers, along with like Ergo Baby, um, hanging in the tree. And I sort of picked it up and looked at it. And I just looked at the sort of, I don't know, user guide credentials thing. And it says you, <laughs> naught to 36 months. So technically I could have Felix strapped to the front of this, strapped to the front of me, carrying round. I wouldn't want to. He's heavy enough in the, in the back carrier, let alone on the front. But yeah, maximum 15 kilograms. So you'd be bent over double carrying your kid around. So I thought, hmm, maybe that's like a, a like a more premium model. Given that a lot of baby carriers are, say, from birth up to, say, six months. I thought, given that's like a sort of one carrier for the first few years, maybe it's worth a bit more money. I think it is, but perhaps not as much as I thought. So I paid £7 for this. Maybe it wasn't really budging on the price, but it is in fantastic condition. Um, all the straps are working, all the like, clips are there. Um, return, maybe 40 on this. There is a particular Baby Bjorn carrier that does really well, but it has a more of like a mesh front. I don't know if the sort of carrying capabilities are any different, but yeah, the mesh front one seems to do a lot, lot better. This is not a bad model, to be fair. Um, I couldn't actually tell you what model it is. I'll put a caption in here if I find out. But for seven quid, there's definitely plenty of profit there. It's easy to pack, it's easy to post, there's always demand for baby carriers. So yeah, from seven quid, can't complain. And that pretty much rounded up the car boot sale. So yeah, slimmer pickings, but to be fair that's kind of okay. It's to be expected given we are towards the end of the season now. What I did find on Sunday was that the majority of the sellers there were like the regulars, the traders, dealers, or whatever you want to call them. And there weren't as many sort of like new faces, like sellers who I hadn't seen before and I think that's just kind of how it is towards the end of the season people are less willing to sort of wait in the dark and potentially in the cold selling stuff they'd rather just do it during the summer months so um, potentially that is my last car boot of the year I can't go this weekend because I've got family commitments and the weather is still looking quite good but beyond that potentially the weather can deteriorate and then that's kind of it and then by the start of October the site is taken over by like a pumpkin patch field parking and that's kind of it so if that is the last car boot of the year I'm happy I'm happy with what I've got I've got enough to keep me going for a little bit and then I've got to rely on well charity shops and other ways of sorting which yeah it's gonna bring in less stock but it's just how it is so thank you so much for watching if you have enjoyed it please do like comment and subscribe and until my next video which I can't guarantee all that's going to be. It could be absolutely anything. Take care, and I'll see you then. Goodbye.